Good evening everyone out there in YouTube land. My name is Jared. This is my channel Mazda B3K. In this five minute fix we are going to clean an idle air control valve. Without further ado, let's get started. <clears throat> All right, for firsties, if you have, let me zoom this out, that's getting kind of fuzzy. If you have a 5.4 liter two valve, your idle air control valve is gonna be mounted in the most god-awful place. It's on the back of the throttle body, which that kind of makes sense, but you are buried up against the firewall and there everything is in your way but that's the valve right there it's held on with a pair of i think 10 millimeter bolts and it's just a pain to get a tool back there to get them loose uh, give you some reference that is your throttle body and then there's your air intake tube right so if we want to get at this you actually want to get at it from the driver's side. You can see it better on the passenger side, but bolt access is better on the driver. But to get that access, the air intake tube has to come out. And in my setup, I don't know what yours is because I know mine's not stock anymore because I got this used. I've got a clamp here that's got to go, a clamp there that has to go, and then I just got to pop this line off. So. A flat bladed screwdriver will get the job done oh and you can use a small flat blade you got to disconnect this this is for the math so don't forget to do that we'll get this out of the way and then we'll go after the bolts all right well I lied guys uh, I don't know I got to whoo almost dropped it in the abyss uh, I don't know exactly what I saw back there that had Phillips unless I'm going crazy but these were eight millimeter and I was able to take a box end of a wrench and get them off. So there's that. And then over yonder here is our IAC. And it's a little difficult to see because the, the reflection from the flashlight here because it's metal. But it's kind of nasty, which is why I took it off to clean it. And based on what I can see using a mirror and feeling the other side of it, it looks like it didn't have a gasket on it. And that's never good. So, got a gasket here. It is a 71216. And this gasket is on, goes for buckets and buckets and buckets of different Ford engines. So, yeah, really common, really cheap, easy to get. So, we got the gasket. And when you go to clean an IAC, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, get some brake cleaner. Squirt it in there, let it do its thing. If you've got a small, like a conical brush that you can kind of get in there to clean carbon wherever you see it, that's always good. And uh, once you get as clean as you think you can, make sure you don't have any paper towel or anything in there, get ready to reassemble. Oh, and the electrical connector. I'll show you the business end over here, which can't really see. I'm gonna bring this around. I'm not taking this hose off because this is uh, something I kind of had to patch together, a little bit of redneck engineering, and it does not want to come off. So I'm going to acquiesce and just not take it off. Um, there is a tab up top right here that you just need to press down with something. I used a bladed uh, flathead screwdriver, and then I just used the weight of the sensor and I pulled and it came right off, so. Anyway, back to cleaning. I'll bring you back. All right, so scrounged around and I've got these cylindrical metal brushes and uh, just using it to scrape off carbon, try to make sure that the valve can travel open and close freely. Sprayed some brake cleaner through it and then I have to start putting things back together and with the challenge here is going to be reassembling it essentially blind. So that'll be fun. All right. So with my brother's assistance, we actually got this elbow back off thoroughly, took the brush and cleaned out the inside of the IAC, got it back on. And now comes the really challenging part, which is we got to get the gasket 
on top of this, get this in position, and then at least get one bolt started, do it all blind, by hand. So I cannot film this. I got to do it all by hand. And wish me luck, people. I will be back when it is done or I've lost my sanity. One more thing. Uh, when you are facing the truck, so when you're looking down and you see the firewall and everything, the IAC, it mounts like this. The actual motor and everything sticks out towards the passenger side. It does not mount the other direction. I think you might get the bolts to line up, but I don't think it would cover the air intakes or the, the air passages correctly. So keep that in mind. All right, get into it. So after reflecting on life choices, decided that the smarter way to do this was to take a little bit of RTV, which is a gasket maker, so it's not going to hurt us in this application. And we use it to tack the gasket in, so that way that's one less thing moving and sliding around as we're trying to get all this in position, or I am doing it blind. So let's use it, squish it down a little bit. That'll help, as you can see, just hold the gasket there. And when it dries, it's not a big deal. It's not going to hurt anything as long as you only use a tiny bit. And then you can run your bolt through and then try to get the whole assembly in place and it should be a little bit easier to do. All right, one thing not to forget guys, because I haven't done it here yet, make sure that when you have the IAC reinstalled, you reconnect the electrical because otherwise the truck's gonna run like junk. Okay, so everything's back together and we're gonna fire it off, see what it sounds like. Okay. So far, so good. Let's come around to the engine bay. Alright, so far that's a really smooth idle. But of course it's warming up. It's a fairly well, cold for us here in Florida evening. So the engine's going to have to warm up a little bit and then we'll actually see it drop down to its true idle see if it'll fix the bobble but the main issue I was seeing is when the engine is kind of warm it doesn't want to crank I think the IAC gets a little confused all right there it goes idle down a little bit so anyway that's gonna do it for this video I would consider this a good repair because I did not blow it up and now I also put a gasket in place so we shouldn't have any vacuum leaks Alrighty folks, that's going to do it for this IAC cleaning video, this five minute fix. So, if you got a comment, leave a comment. I like to read them, I like to learn from them, I like to reply to them. Please also like, share, subscribe, do that YouTube thing. And remember, I make the mistakes so you don't have to. I'll see you guys next episode.